So if you're like me, you probably noticed that there are a whole bunch of people talking about how you can play with AI. And I don't hear a whole bunch of people talking about how you make money with AI. So let's go ahead and break that down and how you would have an architecture set up so that you can build out your next AI application using AWS. So strap in because it's going to be another episode of, hey, it's really not that hard. All right, so right over here, this is essentially what we're building out, right? Now, spoiler alert, we're going to build out a chat AI application. I know, I get it, but hear me out. For free, you can chat with the bronze tier, right? And then you can get a faster, more sensible version. On the silver tier, we'll call that $5 a month. And then on the $10 a month plan, you can not only chat with a large language model, but you can also upload photos to have vision capabilities as well. And you can really expand this to whatever it is. The point isn't the service itself. The point is the encompassing services around it. So how would we build this out? Let's say that for first and foremost, we need authentication, right? So we have our application right up here. Let's just say we're using Next.js and we have this going. Now, here's the thing. When a customer signs up, it's like thing number one that we have to do. We're gonna have a Lambda function right over here, and this is gonna create our Stripe customer. So as soon as you decide to sign up for and use our product, like you're past the landing page, you've signed in, we're gonna create a Stripe customer for you. Now here's what you have to consider. You might be thinking, Michael, all they did was sign up for your application, they didn't pick a plan, but why would you create a Stripe customer for them? The reason is simple, it's because we are going to create a Stripe pricing table you can pass in a customer ID so that user that signed up to your application is still tracked within Stripe. Now, this pricing table is amazing because they give you a React component where you essentially create your products in Stripe and then they will display the pricing page for you. Super cool, super handy for your SaaS applications. And honestly, I think it's underutilized. Okay, so back to what we're building. We have our customer over here. Now they've picked their plan or at least they're going to pick their plan but we need to set up some other infrastructure tooling. We're gonna to have a database in here and this database is going to be set up with Stripe. And in case you missed it, I have another video where every time an action occurs within Stripe, it's gonna fire off an event bridge event, which we can then pick up and put an item instead of DynamoDB. Typically you'd probably want something like a Lambda function right instead of here. This function is gonna integrate with DynamoDB. So then you might be asking, Michael, how can we have event bridge in the mix and not just the Lambda directly it's because all that logic of verifying the webhook and the if else statements are going to be handled by our event bus. It's simply going to listen for individual events. And we can say things like when the invoice is paid, go ahead and renew their services or put an item like, hey, they're part of this new plan. Okay, so this little caterpillar that we have building up right here is pretty much our payment flow, right? Application, sign in, create the customer, and then we're listening for events with these three at the bottom. What's next is that we're then going to have our API in the mix. Now I'm using AppSync because AppSync is wonderful when it comes to real-time subscriptions. And here's where things get really cool. AppSync has the ability to talk to our database, right? Directly. So it's automatically gonna know what plan they're on. We can have access every time they go to a certain page, we can determine whether they have these certain permissions to call on our API. This is pretty much like a customer table right here. So then you might be asking, Michael, how come you just don't get that information from Stripe directly, right? This is perfectly valid. I've seen it before. A lot of folks love to use this approach. But the reason is we don't want to because Stripe has very low rate limits and you want to make sure that you aren't encountering those when you're building out your application. Again, it's another architectural awareness thing that you have to understand as you're building these out. Okay, so let's get to the AI piece. We have uploads available for our gold tier members. This is going to be permissioned thanks to Cognito. Basically, anybody who signs up, they get authenticated access into this bucket. Pretty cool. And then we also have uh, model access, right? This model access is going to be with Bedrock. And here is the beauty of everything. Bedrock has a really cool API called Converse. And Converse is awesome in the sense that when you come over here, all you have to do is specify the model that you're using. And the API is the same, regardless of what model you're using. It's a uniform experience. Right? Because as we know, a lot of large language models have different ways of constructing the parameters. This unifies that. And that's the beauty of Bedrock in itself is that it's a service that encompasses multiple LLMs. And now you get to use this API to pick which one is the right one for you. To give you an example, if we go down to the examples section on this page, here we're using Claude 3. And all we have to do is pass in the messages, what is the role, what is the context that you are working in, and then of course, any inference configuration that you like. Doing so will give you a unified response. So not only do you have an easy way to access and talk to this model, but now you have an easy and predictable way to switch out different models, depending on who knows, maybe what tier you're a part of. 
this Converse API is super powerful and it's cool because it supports streaming. Okay, okay, so far so good. But then next you might be thinking like, Michael, what happens when they switch their plan? How are we going to manage that? You need a whole another portal and ecosystem to handle that experience. No, we don't. We are actually going to rely on the Stripe customer portal to be able to come in here and say, we want to give a link so that a customer can put in their email. Again, we're tracking users by their email when they sign in and we're attaching that to their Stripe customer. So that way, when they have the Stripe customer portal, they get taken to that, they put in their email, and then now they have a way to manage all of that stuff for you. And because we have our application set up so that we can listen to events coming from Stripe and EventBridge, we get to capture that very easily. We don't have a Lambda function that we need to invoke. We don't have webhook subscriptions that we need to set up. We just get to use our EventBridge bus to say, this is the in interaction that we care about. In our case, invoice subscription updated or customer subscription paid. I'm completely making those up by the way, but the point is the same. Now we have a really easy way of building out these SaaS applications using serverless services. This isn't gonna cost us much of anything aside from whatever LOM operations our customers use. And again, the pricing is really attractive because we're using a tiered system here. So not everybody's gonna be using the latest and greatest model. And that's really all there is to it. If you wanna see this application built out, this is like a half day project to get a fully functional application hosted on the web and set up for you. Let me know. I'd be more than happy to get this set up so that you have a firm and selective way of building out your next applications hosted securely on AWS. And until next time, my name is Michael Leando, AKA Focus Otter, and I'll catch you then. Peace.